Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's EAC webinar. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the marketing specialist here at EAC. Um, we'll start off today with a quick intro, and then uh, PTC's technical specialist, Andrew Leedy, I will be presenting on what's new in Creo 6.0. Um, everyone gets a recording of this session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, I'll go ahead with the intro. Um, and then I just want everyone to know on the call that um, we're not just a reseller for PTC. We are so much more than that. So I'll get into um, some other products and services that we offer as well. Uh, so um, for those of us that don't know us, um, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. We are proud to be the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country, offering our customers everything they need for product development to stay ahead of the game with advancements in the latest technology. We offer service lifecycle management software, uh, which helps you create and manage service documentation, product data management software like Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our customizable uh, PLM apps, uh, which are called EAC productivity apps. Um, those help you manage internal product data. We also implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies uh, to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. We assist with design and engineering projects like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, and proof of concepts for our customers. Um, we also offer webinars and PTC as certified training courses for continuous learning. Uh, we are also a commercial reseller for Form Labs, uh, offering their latest products in additive manufacturing. The Form 3 is now available with packages starting at $34.99. And Andrew, you can go to the next slide. Um, any previous owners of the Form 2 prior to the Form 3 release date of April 2nd of this year will receive $500 off their order of the Form 3 until June 1st of 2019. Um, otherwise, we're still uh, selling the Form 2 at a discounted price of $28.50. So please keep us in mind. We really have um, a variety of tools to help your organization um, save time and money throughout the product uh, development process. Today, though, Andrew will present on what's new in the latest version of Creo. Take it away, Andrew. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Andrew Leedy. I'm an application engineer here at PTC. And as Casey said today, I'm going to be going through a demonstration of what's new in Creo 6. So I'll start off with a slide deck showcasing some of these changes from the very uh, broad changes that we made, as well as just some small productivity enhancements. And then I'll go into a demonstration of, the, of some of those changes as well. So before I talk about all these new capabilities that we have within Creo 6, I usually like to take a step back and talk about some of the challenges that we were seeing in industry that really brought about these particular changes. And one of those biggest challenges that we're seeing today is this idea of merging the digital world with the physical world and how this is affecting our product development. There are significant technologies that are emerging to impact this transformation. And Creo 6 is trying to address some of these particular technologies. And one of those big ones is added manufacturing. We're also seeing a lot of changes within simulation-driven design. We're seeing more AR capabilities. And then we're also talking about some just general enhancements within Creo that we've made. So before I talk about some of those more broad changes, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of these augmented reality changes we, we made within Creo. So ever since Creo 4, we pushed this idea of incorporating augmented reality more within our CAD product, and the AR capabilities have been expanded within Creo 6. So starting in Creo 4, you can go over to the Tools tab, just base within Creo. There's not really an extension needed to do this. And you can put a, a basically what we call a spatial target or thing mark down on your model print that out and then see your model just uh, like on your desk or on the floor with just a smart device. 
So we've expanded these capabilities in Career 6 to be able to publish up to 10 models per user to view an augmented reality. So if there's any models that you're working with that you want to share off with somebody, you don't techn uh, technically want to share off the actual 3D file, you just want them to be able to see the product and the environment it's going to be placed in, you can just share off and direct email link to those people to be able to see it uh, just on their smart devices. Career 6, we also added the ability to publish to a QR code and launch experiences from a HoloLens. So if you want to be able to use this new 3D wearable device, then you can be able to see your models and be able to interact and move around those models a little bit better in the real world. There are also expanded capabilities for viewing rights and control of these AR experiences that we can publish from Creo. So you can choose whether an experience will be public or restricted. So basically, do you want just anyone to be able to scan your mark here and be able to see the product? Or are you working with some sensitive data that you don't necessarily want to be open to the entire world? And you could also just add multiple emails at once to be able to share off. So it's a little bit easier to be able to share this with the particular people that you need to be um, sh showing this information to. The next major change within Creo has been around simulation-driven design. So this is the traditional development process that we're seeing when it comes from going from your concept to your design to run a simulation to eventually being able to manufacture your product. There are a lot of historic challenges that we've seen with this particular process. One of these being that you might need to consult an expert when it comes to simulation. We're seeing a lot of engineers just not sure how to run a simulation. We're seeing a lot of high-end packages that you might be utilizing with high-end analysts to actually run the simulations. And it's creating a bottleneck in design. You're able to do this part pretty quickly. When it comes to moving back and forth between simulation and design, that's where we start to get into a lot of headache. And we're also seeing we might not be able to use the actual design model. It might need to be simplified or we're using different software and you need to export and import it into these various different packages. And they all work and operate differently and there's different expertise needed on each of them. Overall, this just leads to a very iterative process when it comes to going back and forth between simulation and design. You're creating multiple different design copies, multiple different simulations of each of those different design copies and you're moving through the process. Uh, but this is kind of the bottleneck that we're seeing. So we, uh, with Creo 6, made this partnership with ANSYS to address some of these challenges. So it's basically taking this idea of concept design and analysis and simulation and bringing them all together and putting them within one piece of software, which is going to be Creo Parametric. So what we're offering with this is real-time simulation. So this is called Creo Simulate Live. This tackles all those different challenges about bringing simulation capabilities into a CAD environment. So once again, it's integrating ANSYX technology into Creo Parametric with the goal of real-time simulation. So every single time you make a change onto a model, have the engineer be able to instantly understand the impact of the change that they just made on the design that they have. So as we're moving through this, uh, there's going to be a few videos playing in the actual PowerPoint, and I'll just talk through them as we're going through this demonstration. So the focus on Career Simulation Live is on speed and interactivity. So first, we'll go through in this and set up the analysis. And then once we have an analysis set up in terms of where are my constraints going to be, what kind of loads and where are those going to be applied, and most of those are just being done directly on the actual career geometry. So you just go through, say what the XYZ components are going to be, choose the units from there, and then we're able to just to press run simulation. And for this particular model, it takes about six seconds. So right there, you can see that we already get results on this particular, uh, this particular part. So I'm able to be able to keep track just right away in terms of where do I stand with this particular design. And then if I want to make a change onto this, we want to add in a new feature, edit an existing feature, delete a feature, whatever the change is going to be, this is my normal career work, we're able to OK off that feature, the model regenerates with the feature in place, and then immediately after, my simulation updates with some new results. So again, instantly be able to understand the impact of any of the changes that I'm making over here. And this could be any change. Could, we could go back and modify the material. I could go back and modify the analysis itself if we want to change the different loading situations. Just be able to play with what if scenarios extremely quickly. So there are my simulation updates. And I could see the new results with those new loads that we have on this particular part. So it gives me a really good idea on where I might need to touch up the design and where I need, might need to add in some additional things or where I have the liberty to remove parts of this particular model. So the initial capabilities here within Career Simulation Live support linear analysis, and it's going to be structural, thermal, and modal analysis as well. And again, any Creo change, we put in a new feature there, I can understand how it has impacted my results for this. 
Now coming in the next release of Creo 6, uh, 6.0.1, we're able to leverage mechanism loads to be able to be the start of my analysis. We're gonna be able to promote part level boundary conditions to my top level assembly. So I can push conditions that I've set on an individual part all the way up to the assembly to run an analysis on the assembly with the same uh, loading scenario. And I can also define simulation bodies similar to how we can do it in Creo simulation, uh, career simulation today. And the best part about all this as well is that this is also going to be available in Creo 4 and Creo 5. So Creo Simulation Live is going to be, be available in 4, 5, and 6. So now we can move on to some of those usability and productivity enhancements. So this is going to be some very broad changes. Uh, we'll be touching on various different aspects of Creo, some of the smaller things that have changed uh, that you'll notice uh, as you try to work within Creo Parametric 6. One of those that you're definitely going to notice is the idea of this expanded mini toolbar. So anytime I click on anything within Creo, I get this mini toolbar that gives me quick access to different important design options that I might want. So I can stay in the model and I don't have to rely on the, as much on the ribbon as I might have uh, historically been used to. So all the different types of feature options that I might want to change on this, uh, if I want to say we're going up to a surface or I want to extrude off in a separate direction, all of that is just done with a series of left clicks just right on top of the model. So to be able to build off that feature right there, we didn't even go up to the ribbon once to be able to do that. You're also going to notice some changes up in the ribbon that we'll talk about as well. So it's all about just being quicker to do all the different design tasks that you're used to within Creo. We've also gone through and cleared up some of the visibility of the model tree. So when a part is active, it's going to gray out anything else in the model tree. And if we use our insert mode, it's going to be able to put a very clear bar to show me exactly where I am. So it's just a lot easier to work with the model tree and be able to figure out exactly where I am on my particular part. We've also changed it so common filters can be on by default. So as we move from part to part or from an assembly or exit out of Creo, I can save off my configurations easier. There's also been some changes to graphing. So let's take a surface analysis as a, a very easy example. We've made a easier interface to set up and control how these graphs look within Creo. So if this is something that you've done or been looking to do within an analysis that you have running within Creo, you'll find this a lot easier to go through and manage. So exact control over basically everything, how it looks, you want to change any of the different colors on the axis or you want to change the font and what the font type is going to be and what the color is going to be for all those. Uh, you can go through and really customize this to exactly how you want. Instead of having to put this out to another piece of software like maybe Excel and then doing the graph there, you can keep this all within just uh, your base career parametric. There's been some updates to the uh, user interface. So a lot of features got updates with new skins and dashboards. So take the whole, for example, if you've worked with this before, it's going to look slightly different. It's not like you need to retrain to do anything. It's just a lot easier. Some of these things that were locked behind different drop downs, the clarity has been increased and it's a little bit easier to see the different options you have. Also within the ribbon for a lot of these different features is direct access to help. So right in the dashboard, I get a link to a particular help page that I might find useful if I'm trying to use a particular feature. Again, not something you're gonna have to retrain on, just a little bit easier for someone who might not be as familiar with some of these different features that they, would, that they might be working with within Creo. There have been additional enhancements to uh, sheet metal, some, some productivity changes for sheet metal and how we can apply that. It's just a little bit more intuitive uh, ways of working with different sheet metal objects, like working with walls. So better options for corners, seams, reliefs. And as we're moving through, this is a quick demonstration to show some of these additional options that you have within Creo 6. So it's basically uh, individual control over every uh, different aspect of this particular piece of sheet metal you're working with and how it interacts with some of these other uh, features that have already been in place within your sheet metal uh, part. And of course, as with almost everything within Creo, you get an instant preview showing me exactly what it will look like as I'm going through and modifying some of these different options. And there's also a new dashboard for merging walls as well within Creo 6. Now, something that was added in Creo 5 was this volumetric sweep. So, uh, or this uh, helical uh, trajectory curve rather. So we have the option to be able to create a persistent trajectory for these helical sweeps that we've made. So if I want to be able to use this for something like manufacturing down the line, 
or just another feature that I want to drive, I can have this persistent be able to pull be pulled out of our actual part instead of just being locked inside of the um, the helical sweep itself or the volume sweep itself. There are some new options for datum points as well. So I can do a projection of them. So project it onto a vertex or a curve, a point on a planar surface, a straight edge, a line, whatever it's gonna be a little bit easier to apply some of these different datum references and then keep them in place whenever you make an update onto your model. Another small change, but something that was highly requested was this option to have a configuration option to set the drill tip ang uh, drill hole tip angle. So this is something that we always had a default for and people might have always been modifying it if they used a different default. So this allows you just to go through and do the configuration option and make sure that this feature always defaults to the correct value for you. So you don't have to change it if you're doing a ton of different holes on a particular part. Also expanded some of the capabilities within model based definition. So if you're doing any types of 3D annotations today within Creo, you're going to see some of these enhancements when it comes to uh, how I can apply notes and uh, some smaller changes like semantic definition, just flexibility with moving annotations to different features. We've expanded just a lot of the changes that we made within Creo 4 and Creo 5 and just uh, included within uh, things like notes as well here. So if you're unfamiliar with some of these different changes, we basically have a dedicated ribbon user interface when it comes to applying 3D annotations onto a model. So whether it's going to be for GTAL information or notes, as it is in this case, anytime you select on one of these different features, you get those dedicated ribbon options to be able to go through and customize all of them. So this is something that was historically just locked behind a different, a bunch of different menus, and it was a little bit difficult to apply these different things on your, on your particular part. Just uh, ease it up a little bit with four, five, and now six. Very small change, but something that was uh, also asked for is this automatic notification for new maintenance releases. So since we are doing faster and faster re uh, releases of Creo, so we're on a yearly release schedule with different maintenance versions that are being pumped out every few weeks slash months. This helps us uh, to give you the information in terms of, do you wanna be kept up to date? It allows you to know when a new uh, version is available. But if you're a customer that likes to stay on one particular release version for longer periods of time, you can always disable this if you want to. In the rendering world with our render studio application, we added the emissive option and when it comes to different parts. So you can make it seem like light is being emitted from an object. This can be done on components or surfaces. So just expanding those uh, rendering capabilities that we had before to just add even more realism into your particular part. So everything that you're seeing on this in this particular pane right here are Creo objects in Creo Parametric using our Render Studio application to give them a more realistic approach. There's also within Render Studio the ability to have animations played out and be able to have them supported with the better uh, realistic look that Render Studio allows them to support. So you can have different parts move around while still being able to keep the realistic version of them uh, in, the, in terms of the appearance. In the, uh, in the detailing world, drawing names can be automatically extracted from our particular parts. So if you have a particular naming convention, you can automatically assign that to your drawings when it comes to applying these to a template, and you can automatically define their names ahead of time. And some other small usability steps, changing colors, this has been expanded out to being included for dimensions and also for our edit definition windows. So if you're someone who likes to go through and customize all the different coloring aspects within Creo, uh, they've expanded it to these options as well. Now for the design for additive manufacturing, we have a lot of exciting changes when it comes to this. So additive manufacturing, again, was something that was, uh, that came out within Creo 4 and we've expanded expanded this within five and now six as well to introduce different new lattice types and how they can be applied onto our part. So one of those new lattice types is the stochastic lattice. Think of it kind of like a foam, a lot of interconnected beams that are connected randomly. This allows you just to decide and go through the options in terms of how this is actually going to fill out and then get a visualization and have it automatically take those particular options that you've decided and fill in the part that you have with the options that you have. And then very easily be able to go through and modify this. If you wanna increase the density or increase the number of cells or choose how this is actually gonna be bound, you can run through those options very easy, easily. Increase the number of cells from 1,000 to 5,000 and then have it instantly update on the part. 
So it's a lot easier um, to do something that was is, to be able to go through a model part like this would actually be probably be extremely complicated, but you can do it automatically with the added manufacturing extension now. We also introduced some of these formula driven lattices. So these three new formula driven cell types, we have gyroid, primitive and diamond. And you can see them once again on the demo on the right side of the screen to be able to see what, what these all look like. These just give you different options for self-supported lattice types. And what self-supported means is many, in many cases, depending on your 3D printer or how you're actually manufacturing this, you might not actually need any support material to be able to build this. So self-supported means that it builds itself without support material. So less support material, maybe even none in some cases, means that we can cut down drastically on the actual printing cost of a lot of these. And I'll show some of these changes as well in the demonstration. But you can do the same things that you can do with their normal lattices and added manufacturing, change the density, choose exactly how they're going to be applied onto a particular part. And we also opened up added manufacturing to include custom lattices, which was, again, highly requested. As soon as we started showing the added manufacturing extension, the, the first question in people's heads were, hey, can I put my own custom lattice types in? So now you can do that within Creo. I can just go choose the custom lattice type, go get my Creo part of the lattice that I actually want to be propagating throughout this entire um, this entire part on this particular surface, and then get a preview in terms of exactly what this looks like. And just as with any of our other cell types, there's a few different things you can do to scale up and down or change the size or change how it's actually going to be spread out on the particular part. So I can see fix the size by uh, 0.5, and that gives me half the size of the lattice on, on the component that we have. There's also a change with lattice transitions. So now I can add in transitions between my lattice and my walls. So here you can see on the right, this is with no transitions. It just builds the same type of lattice on the entire part. Now you can see with transitions, it adds in additional support where necessary. So just really trying to cut down on the amount of material or the uh, make sure that your part is up to strength if it gets into some of these kind of narrow sections where it needs to have some additional support. You have the ability to control a bunch of different options when it comes to how this is actually going to be applied onto the part that you have. And with our added manufacturing plus extension, we also have this and build analysis direction that I can have Creo automatically go through and optimize my design for manufacturing. And it does this by highlighting some of the different critical faces. So the critical angle right there in the red, that's where it's going to build support material, where it needs to build support material, uh, where that part needs to be supported, not just for the purpose of um, you know, building up the part, but uh, where it won't even be able to build the geometry if there isn't support material in place. Um, this is going to be different for every printer, so I can go through and change all those values to reflect what I'm currently working with, and then I can go and have the system compute the optimal orientation using a downskin analysis. So it's going to run through a bunch of different iterations here, so you can see exactly the progress it's making in terms of its convergence. And then as soon as it's done, we can have an option just to automatically flip the model into that direction, and then I can save that orientation off and be able to print directly from Creo with that orientation automatically set up. So be able to just analyze this a little bit better. It can be a better result when it comes to getting my print out uh, and make sure it's more optimal. We've also extended the support for the 3MF file format, which I'll also talk about in our demonstration. So this supports materials and colors in our prints as well as a viewable within Creo. In our print tray setup, we also have slicing support. So this allows us to visualize the slicing in our build tray. And I can also export as a CLI format for engineers who might prefer using this uh, to communicate with the printers as opposed to just maybe importing something like an STL into the, uh, into the printer itself. And in the world of topology optimization, topology optimization now works on assemblies. So I can uh, optimize Optimize a single component in the context of my entire assembly. So if I have individual parts that I want to be using as components for another part, but they're in the same assembly, I can use those as references now. And there's just some improved results when it comes to topology optimization, a better animation when it comes to studies, greater control over the results that we have, and more tools to edit the resulting geometry that we have. So now the geometry before it had to be just constructed as a basic freestyle object. There's no different customization around that. Now there's a little bit more there. You can choose the resolution level itself, and you can also choose to reconstruct it from just the facets itself. 
And before going to the demonstration, just a quick note about the release schedule for Creo now. So here is the basic plan for Creo going forward. So we are now on yearly releases uh, with the major releases being maintained much longer. So here you can see the first step of this was Creo 4. Creo 4 is one of the, the first major release that we had since um, we we switched over to this yearly uh yearly type of release schedule so you can see the next one the next major one is going to be creo 7 with some of these different smaller releases in between so this is the current plan for creo going forward so now i can go into a demonstration to show off some of these additional changes and what they would look like for the overall process in creo so for this demonstration of creo 6 we're going to be taking a look at this swing arm assembly that we have on the back of this polaris snowmobile now, using traditional manufacturing techniques on a part like this, each part of this particular assembly would be machined, assembled, and then maybe even welded together in this case. So instead of going through all of that and kind of going about that in more of a complicated process, instead we're going to look at some of these new 3D printing capabilities that we have. So maybe we want to metal print this. So we'll walk through a typical design process in Creo. And then we'll uh, utilize our lattice structure to optimize the design, do a simulation to validate this, and then we'll prepare this for 3D printing. So kind of showing a design to analysis to all the way over to our manufacturing process that we would typically be going through. So we're gonna open up our primitive lattice type or our lattice part where this process has already been started. So I have a basic lattice geometry here that is gonna be the beginning of design. Now in that lattice design, if you haven't seen this before with our added manufacturing extension, lattice is defined as a single feature or a as a, as a group of features if we want to be changing uh, the different regions that this is associated with. Then all you go through and choose is the bounding surface that you want to choose and then the type of lattice that you want to fill that bounding surface. Now the bounding surface could be an entire part or in this case just a hollowed out section that we had in this particular part. Then you choose the option, go through the cell type, the cell fill, the different options that we can support with that. You get a visualization of the different types of measurements that might that you might be modifying. And then as soon as you have this exactly how you want, you can visualize this and fill in the entire part. So these are one of those new lattice types, those formula driven lattice, which are gonna be once again, primitive gyroid and diamond lattice types. This gives us new options when it comes to how I wanna build this part. And once again, the added benefit of choosing one of these new lattice types that we have within Creo 6 is that these are self-supporting lattices which means that they don't have to have as much if or or any support material for using a printer that uh, that needs that especially if it's like a metal printer we're going to be worried about heat dissipation and such when it comes to support material this allows me to eliminate that out of the equation now in addition to the new last types there's also been improvements to our lattice propagation and the generation of this so this makes the process of applying this a lot faster so even though this is a more complicated lattice type the bottom you can see it creating the lattices and then it doesn't even go through a counter in this case to tell you what's, what step the process is, is, is in because it's able to work so fast. And also Creo 6 supports those stochastic and custom types of lattices as well. So whatever type of lattice I wanna put into my part, we usually have a pretty good um, solution to be able to uh, implement that and easily be able to place it into your assemblies. Now with our lattice type chosen, I can go through and share this design with anyone who wants to see that. So this is some of those new Creo are these new AR capabilities we that we have within Creo. So with our Creo AR design share, I'm able to rapidly publish and manage all of my different AR experiences I might have. So what you're looking at that spatial target that is basically a visualization of where my floor is. So if I would point this out the, at the floor with my phone, I would see this model placed on that plane exactly how I have it in this orientation. And I could choose the different quality I want to publish this off at, but otherwise it's basically just a one-click publish and then a one click to share this off with a particular email address, or I can also share off a QR code if I wanna share it in that manner. So once again, it allows me to very easily be able to share off this design information in a more interactive way with augmented reality as opposed to using a 2D viewer uh, to be able to view our 3D models. So Career 6 has streamlined this process of sharing with multiple people at once and be able to get that out over to people a lot faster. So now we're going to move on to the next step of our design. So we start off, we, we're satisfied with our particular design. Now we want to go off and do a simulation. For this demonstration, we're just going to be using our standard Creo simulation module that has been out since it was called Mechanica. But I could also utilize my simulation live if I want to be able to step through different design options very quickly. But 
in this case, we already have a simulation set up. So to save time, we can open that up. And here I might be able to compare two different types of models that we have with the same similar types of loading scenarios. So I already have some loads and constraints. I have my simulation features already defined. Over in our analysis and studies, we already actually ran this one and completed it. So I could very easily go through and open this up and be able to view the different results. And then this is just those standard career simulation types of um, the workflow that we're talking about here. So I can choose what I'm concerned with. In this case, it might be like Monmesi stress, or maybe we're concerned with our deformation. And I have different options in terms of viewing it while it's deformed uh, because of those stresses that we've applied. And I could be able to view the results and determine, is this model going to be okay? Or do I need to go back and adjust anything that I did in my design? Uh, but the benefit of Creo simulation is that all this is within Creo. This is just another extension within Creo. So if I ever go back and modify any of these particular components, I can have my simulation automatically update as we just did here. So on the right is my old file. On the left is the new one with the new lattices in. And I can determine, was it a good design decision to put those lattices in? Did that cause some additional problems for me that I need to go through an update? Or are we good to go with this? Like maybe I can see... I can see there's a little bit of like a stress concentrator on the left side and maybe adding in a round would be, would, uh, would be able to lower that down a little bit. So I can determine what's going to be a good design decision for me and what is going to be able to give me a better result whenever I get to the end of this process and catch some of these problems a little bit early by simulation early and doing simulation often. So once I'm satisfied with this design, I can go and prepare this for 3D printing. So one of those new things that we added in Career 6 is this idea of our build, uh, build position command. So this allows me to analyze the best positioning for the part on the tray that I have. So this is going to support the uh, reduce the support structure used and also reduce the printing time if it's able to do that. I can adjust the values for the critical angle. So this is going to be something that's going to be unique for whatever printer that I'm currently working with. So I can uh, either position those manually to give me a good idea once I you know, maybe reduce the amount of red that we have on the particular part. If I have the Atom Manufacturing Plus extension, we also do this optimal orientation analysis, which allows me, uh, just as we saw in the PowerPoint slide, to run through, have the system figure out what the best orientation is going to be, be based off of those critical, the critical angle and subcritical angles that we've set for my particular printer. And then once it gets up to a certain um, iteration and convergence, it's able to automatically adjust the file and put it into the proper orientation. So from here, we're all complete. I can see it flips it around. You can see it really reduced the amount of red that we have on the, on the component. And then we save that off to be able to be used when we actually go in through and 3D print this. Now to prepare this for 3D printing, the simplest way to get this to a 3D printer is just to go through and say file, save as, STL. Or in Career 6, we also have the option to save off as a 3MF format now, which is something that's a little bit newer industry. So this format allows us to save off and send off higher fidelity models to a lot of other uh, platforms and printers that might not have supported some of these um, the export types that we had before. So here's my 3MF format type. I can save this lattice off and just send this off to the printer that I want to that I want to um, that I want to send this off to and prepare this for. So now we can go into our tray setup. So this is the last step here. I can, instead of just send this over to a printer, I can also arrange everything exactly how I want in a tray within Creo. And once again, I can either save this off as an STL, and with, but within Creo, we also have the ability to print directly to some of these printers that I might have. So I can go through, put the, use that build direction save that we had already set up. And then with our added manufacturing extension, we can also go through and control the support generation with different parameters I can go through and modify. So I can match our parameters from the build position command we went through earlier to make sure that it's accurately placing in the right amount of support structure here. So since we chose a critical angle 30, we could just adjust that into our printing part, and then it automatically play, uh, applies the support material onto the component that we placed in this assembly. And if you notice over there in the model tree, it actually made an individual part for those support material. So I can go through and edit that further if necessary. We've also had this option to be able to slice the particular file that we have. So I can go through and automatically generate the CLI file, which is going to go through and take the data from the different support structure and also the part information that we have here and just generate that file so I can very easily communicate off to a 3D printer. And if I were going back and see exactly what it did for each of the different slices that we have, I can see it made uh, 1,144 of those. I could visualize the entire playthrough of this and how it's actually going to be able to be built out. 
So this improves the printability of all the geometry that we have and also opens up the amount of supporter, uh, the amount of printers that we can support directly from within Creo. And finally, last step of this is export our part out, but we also have the option to go through and save off our printing data. So if I ever make a change onto this part, I have the tray already set up and I can propagate that change into my, uh, that change into my setup here. But here's that 3MF format. And in Windows 10, you actually get a visualization of this file as well. So if you have a bunch of different files saved off that you're sending over to 3D printers, you can very easily be able to find these within Creo 6. All right, so that is my demonstration for Creo 6, as well as some of the information about what's coming up next with Creo with this uh, release schedule that we have here. So thank you everyone for joining. Thanks so much, Andrew, for that presentation on what's new in Creo 6.0. Um, if you have any questions on extensions, packages, and pricing or further training on Creo, uh, please reach out to us and we will get you more information um, or recommend that you take one of our uh, PTC certified training courses. Thanks again for joining everyone and have a great rest of your day.